side selection here for game number two, and they decided that they wanted to play on the blue side. So SKT, red side, two games in a row. And that's actually a big thing because obviously they went for Twitch this time around. I'll be interested to see whether Twitch gets banned out. You can see LeBlanc and Syndra have been targeted already. No surprise there. I wonder if we're going to see that Twitch ban come through. Yeah, Joe calls it right there. And this may just be SKT letting OMG play their hand, seeing if they can beat them at their best game, and then destroying them. They got to see the Syndra tricks they could pull, the stuns from kind of off screen, followed up by Twitch. All right, those are cute tricks, but we don't want to play against those anymore, says SKT. Changing up their bands in game two, despite being on the same side. Organaban, actually, this time around for OMG, as well with uh, as well as the Jax as well. So interesting Ooh. choices on that front, obviously. Uh, those Black Shields always an annoyance, especially if they believe that Thresh is going to get banned and they want to end up with Leona once again. And I gotta say, that Morgana ban is really good for OMG. When they lost their group stage game to Cloud9, they lost that a few times, Thresh is up. As it is the Rat, there's a number of choices. It's going to be Alan's Thresh that they may well focus. It hasn't been locked in yet. This will give Twitch to Piglet. This could be a big, important change for OMG. Yeah, that's the trade they had to make. There's a lot of concessions you make when you first pick a support right there, especially when they do fairly targeted bans. They really, really forced him onto that. When they ban Leona as well, they're saying, if you want your initiate support that's not Annie, you better take Thresh. And we saw this, actually, OMG running similar. They ban out Morgana, they let Twitch through, Sneaky on Cloud9, and that's exactly what they let through, and it absolutely destroyed the rat this time around, despite being beaten by it in groups. It's actually exactly what they did against Twitch. They put a Lulu on their own team and then used him to just stop Twitch's assass assassinations and try and control him and also make sure that Cloud9 couldn't build a protection comp around Twitch. It worked against Cloud9, but SKT is a different level of team. Look at that. The next picks the Shivana, of course, for this top lane. We heard it earlier on about Trundle and beat impacts maybe go to yeah. go to champion fits here perfectly against the Shivana. The main Trundle player in oh. Korea, but that is a oh wow. Real uh, early TF bit. This was locked in against uh TPA. TPA, yes it was. He played it against Morning and Lulu, actually, so he he's played this matchup. Controlled he fairly well. Him. Yeah, well yeah. he got control but he out farmed and then built a bunch of damage on Twisted Fate. They use it for the overall map control. You can bind the catch potential of a Twisted Fate with a Twitch. It doesn't matter how Lulu'd up people are with shields, you're still going to kill a person. Well, as Ball said, I locked in Shivana and they locked in Trundle. <laughs> it's pretty much how it goes. <laughs> Pomelo, though, back on Pantheon. Whoa! Oh. And it does be Lucian. Whoa! This is the support they were talking about. So it's not that secret. Not actually, really. Because we've seen it in the European LCS. Jay replayed it, I think, two or three times so far. Millennium finished bottom of the table. They didn't have the biggest success. Yeah. Mandu and SKT are a different beast, though. This is secret for Korea and for SKT, but it's definitely not secret for Europe. Europe. I wonder how much European LCS OMG's been watching. There's a few little tricks when you're playing support zillion. A lot of them have to do with jugglers. If you did do a two buff start, you don't have to kill a small buff in between to hit level three and do really early ganks. If you bring, uh, I think it's one or two experience quints. I'm not exactly sure on it, but that's one of the moves. But the big difference here is that with Piglet on Twitch, he can get sped up to get out of there. He's got the the ultimate that could come out of Zillion to keep him alive, or more to point, give him a second life if yeah. he gets focused down. This is actually potentially a problem from OMG. I wonder how they're going to deal with this. And like you said, whether they've come up against it in the LPL. Yeah, and this is the moment too when you pull something crazy mm -hmm. like this out. We just said this is probably the the game that decides whether it's a 3-0 sweep or it goes all the way to five. So it's not like this is just an SKT. Yeah, we're confident we're going to show off support zillion. This is them saying, yeah, support zillion is what exactly what we're going to do. With Twitch, they can do the stealth with the bombs on top of them for an yeah, even bigger yeah. bomb. You never know. We'll see how it works out as the champions stride onto the rift. We will still want to know what your predictions are over on Twitter. OMG win or SKT win with the hashtag to at LOL Esports. It's a big game. Everybody saw the last match. This could go either way, and it's a very close one. Game two getting underway here at the All-Star in Paris. It's the matchup we all wanted to see, honestly, if we're all honest with ourselves coming into this one. Everybody would love to have seen a European or an American team here in the finals, but OMG SKT, I think, is the best finals everyone could have hoped for.
It's definitely the match that was expected to be seen as well. Both these teams coming in huge favorites for this event, and they definitely delivered in game one. Welcome to With the for Faker, second time that we're seeing it here. Second time against the Lulu as well, running the Ghost and Flash as we've seen from them before in the past. So, what we're gonna see is OMG that are making the first real moves of this one. We saw it in the last game where they kind of traded positions, but look at this mass recall coming out for the Chinese side. Yeah, they just ran in to get that deep ward. Level one jungle control. In a best of five like this, they have to change up their level one strategy every single game to avoid becoming predictable. So quite clever, because if they were spotted going in there, which I believe they were, SK Telecom now thinking, okay, they're going for the red buff. Should we try and counter it? Should we try and be defensive? They've got no vision. Yep. And of course, you can see OMG, they're now in mass, on mass, going down towards the blue buff. Or yep. no, they actually oh. think they're countering the red, and well, huh. SKT are not there. This could, this could very well lead to a collision of some kind early on in the game. Whenever you have a team actually fooled at where you are, you potentially get people running into each other, but because they are on opposite sides, no fights today. No, no, definitely not. SKT headed to check out there in case someone does come around. And the only real person that could do that is Xi Young, but honestly, is he gonna go blindsided into a oh, bush? Wow. No, he's not going to. SKT here just sit around. They're going to go to the blue. See that there's nothing actually there. Uh, sorry, there's nobody actually there, and they'll be able to take this blue for free. And there's a couple things we have to track to see how the adaptations have been made from game one. There was extremely early ganks onto Shi Young in that 1v1 because as Shi Young goes, OMG goes. If he gets shut down, they lose games straight out right. And also, Pomelo fell very far behind in the early game. He's going to have to do more to help them not fall behind here because Twisted Fate will snowball the game very easily. And the experience differential is going to be much greater this game if they do fall behind because of that zillion passive. So SKT around, they've taken away the enemy blue buff, they're taking away their red buff. As of yet, SKT's blue buff hasn't been touched, but you can see Pomelo is now there and will be taking that one away. So we'll see whether this results in one of those 4-0 splits or whether they try something different as of yet. Looking like it may well do. We were gone here, and they're going to surely go down onto that tower where the AD carrying support are already pushing. If you look from SKT's side of the map, on the top lane, the duo lane there, they are not pushing as heavy as what we're seeing from OMG. And this has been the story of how these teams play the lane swap game. They don't do the fast push, they instead deny the top laner even more so, and make farming more of a priority for them. They try and star farm more so than the regions we're familiar with. Faker just warded out the blue buff there, so they're aware of what's going on. You can see OMG using the buddy system, as I believe you've coined the term, whereas Bank is actually going on his own, which means Impact will potentially fall behind while Gogoin has been gaining that extra experience. He's backed off, though. We're not going to see any 4-0 splits this time around. And, and it's so curious, Pamela with the very early gank, this oh, cool. maybe just has to burn flash, you'd think. Yeah, Ghost is dead. Yeah, goes to get out of this one and actually turns around, puts a bit more damage back on towards Xi Young. Bengi was also coming around there as well, so he was already relatively safe, but one of these summoner spells going down, as happened for Xi Young, he doesn't have an ignite in case he needs to finish anyone. One thing I noticed with Faker running once this Flash Ghost TF is he's much more free to use his summoner spells. He might actually flash for this aggressive move. There he we does, go. flashes in there, he has the damage. Is it gonna be enough? Oh, the voice box not in there. No. Pomelo comes around, jumps on towards him. Pomelo actually is gonna pay the price here and had to flash out of it. That's a big mistake. And a big part of that early game jungle start for SKT is the fact that Bengi is ahead of Pomelo. So if they do have that 2v2 in the mid lane that people talk about so much, it will go in the favor of SKT. And there is the first story of the game actually going down in favor of OMG in the bottom lane. So we'll see. They are recalling right now. Sure, they're going to be headed towards that top lane to bring it back to a 2v2. Meanwhile, Pomelo back towards mid. Of course, Xiong as well coming in with a second Doran's ring and boots of speed there. Just to touch on the AD carry. Son is got himself the Vamp Scepter as they are headed up towards that top lane. And there is the vote. It's still as it was in game number one, very heavily SKT favored at 84 to 16. Yeah, the fans stick in very much with the analyst desk on this one. It's still only Freak standing on his own, trying to desperately put those Twitter votes in. He's hitting all his followers and seeing what he can do. Pomelo, though, in this mid lane, is waiting to see if he could create something on Faker. No flash or ghost on either mid laners right now. 
So this is the opportunity, and you can see Bengi already moving back to lane as well. And part of OMG's strategy so much when they're successful is not only isolating Xiang into 1v1s, it's denying the other jungler Ooh. experience. Hello. That just hasn't been possible against SKT. He's in trouble. Level four. Omelos is level no flash. flash. He's got no flash. He's in trouble here. He's trying to use the stealth of the bushes, but he's not going to get it. Bengi's going to keep on following. Oh, that glitter lands. Oh, what a brilliant pillar from Impact. Stopped him dead in his tracks, and that was an easy first bud once again for Bengi. Cuts him straight off, and that is just the beginning of OMG's problems. They are down in the gold. They are losing an experience, oftentimes because of TF and Zillion, but giving up first blood as well is trouble. Speaking of TF, level six has been hit now for him. Bengi having that advantage over Pomelo, and they are going to go maybe for a dive. Uh -oh. He's only level five. There's no wild growth. Faker picks up the kill. They're executing these moves smooth as butter. It's like the first game was a bit of a warm up there for SKT. What a move right there, but Impact getting low. Impact almost gonna go down from this one. Flash in from Go going. needs a couple more ticks of damage. Impact flashes away, but of course there's no tower in there behind him. The burnout gonna come back on here. Impact running for his life, but Go going brings the first kill in here for OMG. How smooth was that play right there because he <laughs> destroyed him in a 1v1. That's exactly what Go going needs to do in this situation. Finally, a top laner is not going to get denied against SKT. That was butter-like, that's what that was. Right, though, we could see the ward coverage from SK Telecom. And I just spotted out there, Pengi, he actually went down towards that bottom oh, and put the ward very early. Late. Oh, Zyung's in trouble once again, locked up by the stun guard. Taste the fears enough from Pengi. There should be another wild card to come through, but have they gone too far? Pengi takes two tower hits. They don't get the kill this time, but it's only a matter of time, I feel. There's a big differential build in between Faker and Zyung now. Yeah. Considering that mid lane has gone completely one-sided with a twisted fate pick too, TF's not the type of laner that you think will decimate a mid lane, but because he's gotten so much support from Bangi, he's really shutting down Shi Young. We talked about how Lulu isn't the same early laner that she once was before the nerfs, and SKT is just really exploiting that fact. And credit to Bengi is coming behind. I, I say, is that credit to Bengi or is Shi Young pushed up a little bit too far a couple of times here? Because Bengi's got right around the backside of him both times on that. Here comes the hook. Uh -oh. out from Alan Fumandu down to half HP, but he's level six, so he doesn't die anyway. He immediately dropped the aggro right there as soon as he pinged six off the dying minion. At least the lanes have evened out a little bit into standard fare. That would be good for OMG normally if their mid lane wasn't getting destroyed so much. Yeah, Faker pulls those yellow cards out, no problem there. Mandu pulled in this time around, plays a lot of damage, but as you mentioned, there is the ultimate. Alan's taking some spray and pray damage from Piglet or the Ratatat tap, whichever you'd prefer. But again, it's another easy life back from Mandu with that ultimate. Pushed him clean out of lane, but uh -oh. they try to catch Faker. He's down both summoners. Ah, uh, Bengi coming in from the side, though. He's going to actually pop the ultimate. They may go for this one. She young down to half oh. HP. Pomelo is there as well. Wild Growth is available should they need it. They try and turn around. Faker's only at half as well. In the end, they go low, but they don't go down. This game is so close to being completely out of control, actually, for OMG. They fall behind. They fell behind in the first game, and they're falling behind by a much larger margin in this one. They they have to pick something up right now. In fact, came trundling his way up through that jungle, has found the pink ward as well, so he's gonna take that down and he's still laying in wait, actually. Peng is gonna clear out that blue buff for Faker, which will, of course, keep that destiny on a much shorter cooldown. We've yet to see it being used. It's only a matter of time before he jumps across to Young, needing the help there to get that blue buff down. Pomelo taking a bit too many damage, too many hits. They invested so much just to get him the blue buff, and he's still getting obliterated in that Ooh. mid lane. Yeah. Really going in. This is their sole advantage right now, is go going on that Shibana. Stopped him, though. Dead in his track. Impact not backing away. Faker's coming in support. Destiny comes down. Here they go. This is why Yellow Card pulled out. Go going now in trouble. That ultimate is about to run out. He's got no support coming. And that is a clean kill for Faker. And just like SKT knows, that go going is ahead, they immediately got to punish and it is Faker that has won that mid lane matchup and they have taken away OMG's strategy. And you mentioned earlier that he's not scared to burn his summoner spells here. We saw the ghost in the mid lane before as they were trying to kill off Chi Young. Funnily enough, he's had this cycle where when one's been down, he's basically been almost on cooldown as he uses the other one. So he's always got either ghost 
or that flash to actually get himself maybe out of trouble or as is more the case, has been the case here to chase someone down for the kill. And it's how he played TF against Morning as well at the start of the group stage. I really like it because it's allowing him to make more plays. When TF is there, he gets an advantage just because he's an extra person. And especially in this series where we knew there was going to be more mid lane ganks and more action, he needs that added escape spell just to make sure he keeps himself safe. It's working brilliantly. Go going tries to get the ward out there, but he can see he's now got Piglet in his lane just off at the side. Pumandu, oh, Bengi coming down. It's going to be the dragon. Started off, and Bengi, he's on point with those void spikes, actually. He caught both members of OMG in that last fight that happened with the void spikes to slow them down, and Xiong is pretty helpless right now. 30 CS already behind, two kills behind as well. Is a big differential right now in OMG and SKT. And as far as control of First Dragon, OMG seems to never have any. They have their AD carry up top right now against a top laner who has teleport. SKT could have actually forced a Dragon right now, but OMG may be making a rotation down to this bottom Dragon to force a 5v5. It would be the moment where they try to control something because they know they're falling hopelessly be f far behind in this game. Not even sure they can contest it, that's the problem. Yep. They're in a dangerous situation. It would have to be a very well played and executed maneuver to try and turn it around. With the duo lane down the bottom here, you can see that Sun and Alanan are rotating down to join Go going. We have got level six on, C um, on Pomelo, so we will start seeing some of those man drops being happening. Cancelled. Well, maybe cancelled as well, <laughs> that's true. But uh, they need to be careful still, Piglet and Pumandu. They are still very fragile, that pair. Faker pushing heavy again on this middle. That's going to be right up on the turret. They ping there the position of Lulu. And we can see that two of them, the bottom lane, moving into that lane. And look at that piglet. This is the Going trap. to stealth himself up. There's the destiny. There's the bomb on his head as well. Here comes a stun. It's actually a hot shot towards Faker. That was a great little turnaround from ONG. That's exactly how you play Thresh against TF. You run farther behind your AD carry, and then you prep the hook for when he comes in. Maybe an ultimate top. He's coming in. He's going for impact. He's going to land on towards him. The stun comes down. Impact's already been in trouble once again. Go going. But it's a great flash. Dragon Descent will follow through. There's no support. Remember, Destiny was already used. Go going. Tries to turn the corner. The pillow of Phil will be back up. Pillar of Ice. Sorry, impact gets caught out. That's a good flash and stun from Pomelo. And they get themselves a kill back on the board, but they lost the bottom to it nonetheless. Exactly. The stack that was in the bottom lane from SKT remained after they made that play top lane. It's a kill for an objective. Objective. SKT takes the objective. That's more important right now. And now they say, okay. And there's a spot of <laughs> chance again as SKT already way well underway with the dragon. Half HP on that one. More damage coming in from Faker from the side. This is not an option for OMG. Too slow to react and get over to that one. And that is another bit of gold. 4,000 is the difference. Uh -oh. Impact comes back into lane. He's like, I got a Blade of the Ruin King now, mate. I'm going to kill you. Go going has to walk off. He's going to have to get going is what he's doing. I'm not sure if Koreans say mate that often. I don't anymore. think they say yeah. mate too often either. Northern America actually, strangely <laughs> enough. It's just us in Europe. Nevertheless, you know, Pomelo obviously, while he helped create that kill in that top lane, you've got to feel with that excellent death sentence, Alan landed and Son, they put so much damage back down on Piglet. If he'd have been down in that bottom half of the jungle, he may have been able to create a bigger play down there. You could absolutely think that because it's true. I, the one thing with SKT as well is Pumandu is exceedingly squishy on Zillion right now. He built the tier of the goddess. It's just because SKT has so much overall map pressure, he has gone completely unpunished. It was just that one time he had to burn his ultimate in order for them to get a turret, basically, in the top lane. The support pick is working out quite uh -oh. well. Here comes the Piglet. This is a surprise. Bomber coming in. Piglet's there. We saw it last game. This time around, it's Siyoung on the opposite end. He flashes through. There's the kill. Ratatat -tat all over Siyoung. Which is king right now, it seems, in these games. He always finds a way to make that play in the mid lane. Bengi also trying to make a play with the help of some vision. Yeah, I think he's going here. He's going to get stunned out. There it is. He gets the dragon <laughs> descent. Oh, he passed away, but the bomb's on him. He's going to hit both him and Pomelo, and that's going to be a double kill for Faker. Uh-oh. That is bad news for OMG right now. This is SKT with a 6,000 gold lead at 15 minutes. Last game, OMG had a good early game composition 
against SKT who punished them a little bit. And then because they had good rotations and movement in the mid game and good team fighting skills, OMG could come back at it. This time, SKT has punished them even harder with a better early game. And honestly, with Twitch and Trundle, they might even beat them late too. Very, very difficult comeback. And look at this, Impact up at the top. Oh, you want to teleport? Bam, your turret's gone. And now Impact going to try and run away from Pomelo. He's put down the Pillar of Ice there. Bengi waiting across the side, but he's not very healthy. He's got the Blade of the Rune King already used. He's used his ultimate here. He's got no flash. Bengi actually showing himself, which a little bit dangerous. Oh, you it may comes think about. Yeah, the rest of the oh. team, that's the difference. Coming around the side, couldn't quite get there, though. As much as Spartan Chance come in, they're down 7,000 gold. It just keeps getting worse and worse for OMG. They commit so much to kill an 0-3 Trundle, who's going to be big late game anyway because of his ultimate. This is the guy they need to kill. Well, they managed to get the flay down on him, and a lot of damage, but Sun's in trouble now. The lands and having to be used just at the right time. Picked it was there to support his mid lane. And he only needed really to show himself there, did Piglet, as he came through. and. Well, they don't want to fight him at this stage. 144 CS, only the single kill. But we've seen what happens when he yep. comes out of the ambush and just destroys you over and over again. Last time around, it was Sun that had that one. Oh, this is Dana oh, from Dinka. He's not watching. He's going to go down. down. Big move by Go Going and a rare mistake by Faker. This could be a push for OMG up the mid lane. They have the numbers advantage. They need to get these turrets down. They get the first turret, but will they get a second? The hook's not going to land, and the rest of SKT now coming in. Impact's going to get bounced out here. Impact will go down as well. It's a double for OMG, Zillion. but they have to back away. In comes Bengi jumping in there. Zillion will regenerate, as you say, coming in towards him. Bengi gets taken down a second time. Impact hooked in. He's going to go down, and that is a good turnaround. That's a great calling as well on Mandu. You mentioned how squishy he was. It's going to go down. No, the second hit's not enough. But the turret could go down, oh, OMG back away. It's still three kills for OMG, and they're way more important than you would first think. Because of the Zillion and the lead SKT had, these things level up OMG in the context of the fight. Impact actually did go down because of the Zillion ult, which gave SKT a little bit of added confidence trying to go in. But Go Going was so strong, and he had them on that fire trail. They took so much damage chasing the Shivana that it got turned very quickly by the Glitter Lances and the shields from OMG. Great fight for them, being down 7,000 gold. Oh, that was so close there at the end, Mandu. It's flashing behind his own turret. Already used his ultimate, so didn't go down. That's the important thing for him. 6-6 six, six in kills. We can see in the top left, one and a half minutes until the next dragon comes into play. Last time around, SKT took that one. OMG were slow to react to it. Let's say that they didn't get there in time. They moved in that general direction, but it had already gone by the time they uh, even came into a position of all thinking about even challenging for it. But to be honest, they're 5,000 gold behind. They could really do with a dragon. But these are the mistakes we have seen SK Telecom make it. This is yep. the exact same things that have been happening over in the Champions and LOB. It's why they got knocked out when they sometimes they do get ahead a little cocky, and why not? They're the reigning world champions, but exactly. they've got to be careful against the opposition. OMG are not to be discredited here. They are the number one team over in China. They've dominated the LPL League, so they will know how to close a game, or more to the point, how to chase a game when they fall behind. And they've had to do a lot of chasing games yeah. over in the LPL. They, I mean, they only lost three games overall, but well, do not have a good early game strategy. You know, before that happened, you know, once again, Pomelo was two levels behind Bengi. But they turn those kills around, and suddenly he's back. Level 10 be level 10. Mm. And it, these are the problems. That put, oh, they're going deep yeah. on this one. Well, there goes the experience from, oh, the stun card lands and the Twitch. Oh, he's dead. That's the danger of the twist of fate in there as well. With Zillion, Ghost on, gets the speed boost from Zillion. You saw he ran 4,000 miles an hour through the jungle <laughs> and was able to get that stun card in, and then an easy kill follows. This is going to be in the turret. We can see the SKT of force. OMG completely away from that one after the kill, and that will be their fifth of this game. And just oh. like just like game one, this is a big Even difference. More. Oh, this is going to be a multi-kill right now. Alan going to get locked up. He goes down to Bengi. They're going to leap on through. A quick slice on towards Pomelo, gets himself a second, and he leaps out with the reset. Just so much power right there from SKT, knowing when they can get the catches, and the chase of the Twisted Flate plus Twitch, and all the speed they get from the Zillion. It's really working out quite wonderfully. Another look at this one, it was just the stealth twitch into a slow and TF gave them no way to hide really. They had to burn everything just to stop the TF. 
that they couldn't necessarily peel the Kazakhs that wanted to jump right on their face. Too much kill pressure, they get the kills and the dragon. And there's the dragon that we were talking about. OMG, as much as they would have needed this one, well, they definitely can't now. Been pretty much whitewashed down in that bottom lane. Five turrets down, second dragon of the game going over to SK Telecom. And I'll tell you what, look at the scoreboard up top there. We are close to a 10,000 gold lead here. 20 minutes into the game. And you know, when I was looking back, you know, we, we were doing research obviously for this event and back at Worlds, we watched OMG and we saw there's a man drop, it's not gonna land actually on impact, he should get a for now. No, dodges death sense, it's just a four-man pile on. They're gonna come into it. What a fantastic pillar of ice stops four wow. members of OMG dead. Back to my point. <laughs> wow. That's cheeky, that's for sure. <laughs> He's gonna keep going because the rest of his team are there. Piglet wants oh. to try and catch something. Even just a couple of them, they know where OMG is. That's five of them. This would be a 5v4 if they decide to close. No, Instead, they just take something else. Taking yeah. a terror. And this is what I was about to talk about. It's the fact it. that OMG, and when we watch Royal as well, very similar situation is when they go for the kills, they generally don't push an objective afterwards. It's just simply a case that we caught this guy out. SKT, every time they go for a kill, an objective will follow. And this, this is another dead. They're kill. trying to call him down. Piglet did open up in a bad situation. Oh, bit off more than he could chew there, going into two of them. He had Zillion with him though, thinking they could have a go at this one. Bengi not quite getting in range. Zillion going low. Where's Faker going? Enough. Where's he going? He's oh. not going too deep on this one. He, he is. is going in the base. He's going in the base. Let's have a look at Faker. Throws out the wild card of the sun in the base. Oh, he's in trouble though. He's got a little bit too deep on this one, buddy. That tower's going to take you down. And Alan now, can he throw the death sentence back on Bengi? No, not quite there. They're going to chase on towards him instead. Pomelo's going to try and get away. He didn't get knocked to the side, but he's going to get interrupted anyway. And Bengi gets another. That is a bit of a cleanup crew from SKT. They do only get two kills off of that one, but also a turret. And I feel like the death was Faker's own fault for that. He didn't even go that deep <laughs> into the face. Uh, nice play by Allen to stop him down, but it is now 10,000 gold at 22 minutes. I Nearly insurmountable, I'd have we, to say. We see a little bit of that air of, a little bit of cockiness. Arrogance, here arrogance. From SKT, the fact that, you know, Piglet's Diving in there, one versus two. Although he had Zillion coming in as well, which you can argue may have pulled off, uh, been pulling off him. Impact surviving a 1v4 and then having a bit of a dance yeah. under the tower. Faker going right inside the base. Well, listen though, mentally, that's how you demoralize a team if you're trying to close true. them out quickly. We have seen, especially in Korea, a lot of teams, KT Bolts come to mind. They go up 2 0 in a series, oh, yeah. drop the next three. That absolutely does happen. And if you can get inside the minds of the enemy, like after SKT beat Fnatic in game one, they were in their heads. Oh, They're gonna bullets. try and get into OMG's heads KT here. Bullets did it against SKT, if you remember. Yeah. Back, which is what got SK Telecom at the World Finals in the first place. Bengi caught down, but he gained the revive on him. He's gonna come back to life. I'm not sure if SK Telecom can corral around him in time. Oh. He bounces away. He gets caught out though. That should be a kill. It is Sun that gets it. Now they're on towards Faker. Chasing him down, pulls out. No, not the Sun guy. Now he gets open. It this time around. And you can see Piglet comes around. Ratatat, that's not gonna be enough to save you against five members. Bounced in the air by the Wild Ghost, but he's still alive. Oh. Hanging on, the life still gonna take him down. Gets himself a double. Faker's that comes back around on towards him. Go, go and gets locked up. It's another kill. Faker on towards Sun. Red card pulled out. Gets on to Allen. He's going for another. Can he get the triple? Oh, the Red card enough. He thought he stole it. And it's gonna be a clock. <laughs> impact is Pumandu's bomb that finishes him and gets the ace for SK Telecom T1K. He pulled out the support, he also gets the kill. It's a delayed ace. It was a desperation fight by OMG, and SKT is rolling down the mid lane. There is that 10,000 more, it's a 30,000 gold lead by now. Going straight in on towards the inhibitor turret. Not gonna last long whatsoever. 10 seconds until the last person spawns in, so. SKT want to be a little bit wary about this one. Are they just going to turn and go straight towards Baron? They very well could. They're a little bit low on mana, and they're not the type of team to let the game go at Baron. But honestly, with a 14,000 gold lead, 24 minutes in, I wonder if a Baron plus Ace would even turn it at this point. Well, they're trying to chase down Faker. They're not going to go for it. They are going for it. The they're going for Faker. Coming in. Going once Faker. Everybody wants a kill on Faker. We saw Pauls saying it was worth when he got that kill on Faker. The stun card comes in though. Coming around the side is going to be Shi Young. He absolutely wants Flash. the kill on Faker. Flashes for it. Worth. Question now is with Bengi kind of being in the base, 
Do they try a Desperation 5v4 Baron? There's a Twitch that would open up and probably get a Pentakill if he actually does it at the right point, but it is honestly worth the try. They know where Twitch is coming from, though. Yeah, that's that Baron's going down real fast. It could actually be a Smite War. Oh. SKT would almost want to go in immediately because this Baron's going down faster and faster. Bengi from the side. Allen got the bomb on his head. That Baron is so, so very low. Bengi closing in. Big There's Lane. a lot of damage coming. Big Lane's uh -oh. there. He goes to OMG. Is that going to be bad for SKT? They still got a lot of damage coming out of Piglet. There's two juicy targets for him in there. There's the jump over the wall. Good playback from Allen, but not sure he'll get him away from the bug, who lands a slow and finishes off the kill. Meanwhile, San here being chased down. Impact coming from the side. One chomp should surely do it. Get slowed down. Oh, nice shot. Cheeky from San. This is going to be a kill for Impact. And, well, the man drop was cancelled there by Pomelo. Kind of cleaned up. They did get the Baron, though, which is a... They had to try. Yeah. That is the only thing. When you're down 15,000 gold 25 minutes into the game and a Baron opens up because you kill the person, great call by OMG. But of course, SKT is a good team. They chased after him. They got to open up on five with the rat attack. Had everyone scattered. And it was just a matter of how many could SKT chase down. Turns out four out of five. Yeah, very good fight. SK Telecom once again coming out on top. 20 kills to 11, only 26 minutes into this game. And as you mentioned, gigantic gold lead. 7-2 to two in turrets with that inhibitor down. This is only surely going one way. SK Telecom could try and demoralize OMG here. OMG clearly grasping at straws. They may have to try and take this time now to actually discuss what the hell they're going to do next because this is not how game one went. Game one was yeah. very close. This one has not even been remotely close at any point, if I'm honest. Well, the thing is, in these games one and two, Faker has been able to pick exactly what he wants against Shi Young's mid laner. They wait until they reveal, and then they pick afterwards. That dynamic will be changed for game three. And considering how pivotal OMG is in the strategy, it really is as Shi Young goes, OMG goes. Game one, he's stuck with Faker. The game was close. He actually outperformed him, and it was the rest of SKT who barely came out the victor. This game, though, because of the camp by Bengi, all the ganks, they killed Shi Young twice before he hit level six. And the game reflects that. It is completely one-sided to the side of SKT T1K. See, looking down the items there, four piglet, blade of the ring kick, ghost blade, static ship, got another BF sword in there as well. Over the other side, for Sun, there is literally two items in there. And we see there, masses of damage coming in. OMG were trying to set something up, but You've got a Twisted Fate against you who has got pretty much everything he needs to just wreck faces and turrets at this point in the game. Yeah, he is on full item build. He actually built that Lich Bane very early on First for uh, the 4.6 patch, but uh, Alan, is he going to try and create a play here? You know, Thresh was locked in as that first champion. They value this champion so highly for Alan, but you've got to wonder, surely Piglet on Twitch compared to Sun on Chip. Uh, oh! Bengi caught out, actually. They're not going to create anything off that one. They do try and follow it through, but they just force him away. The calling continues to force him hey away. Taken very low. Sun's not going to follow through, though. But I was about to say, I'm, no, I'm, no I'm going to ignore my point. Piglet caught out. Where's he going to go? He's caught his vision. Not enough, though. And SKT going to turn this fight around. Oh, Baker coming in from the side. Impact there as well. San actually got a wild growth on him, but they're able to rip him to pieces. Go going, tries to get in as well, but they're just going to be chased down here. It's Baker that's doing all the damage at the backside. There's a double kill for Trundle, and now they're going to collapse in onto the Shivana. He is the last man standing here for OMG. There is the ace. Baker picks up the kill, and that will be game number two going over to SKT. Five for zero, 25 kills in 29 minutes. SKT makes a statement in game two. Absolutely, no doubt about it. The winner, very much SK Telecom this time around. The reigning world champions are stamping their authority all over the All-Stars right now. Is there anyone that can stop them? OMG, they're two to zero now. SK Telecom too far are oh, running a perfect All-Stars. They are now six, tell a lie, that's eight and oh.